Phases of polyhedra are objects of interest in the study of polyhedral combinatorics. Before we look at the definition of a phase of a polyhedron, let's first look at a motivating example. Consider the polyhedron given by the non-negative orthon in R2. So the shaded region here denotes the polyhedron we are talking about. Now there are some things about this polyhedron that we can identify. For example, the part of the polyhedron that lies on the horizontal axis, the part of the polyhedron that lies on the vertical axis, and the extreme point here at the origin. These three sets seem to be identifiable features of the polyhedron, and in fact, these are some of the phases of this polyhedron here. Now for the red part, we can see that it can be defined by the intersection of the horizontal axis with the polyhedron, and the green part is the intersection of the vertical axis with the polyhedron. But what about this extreme point here? We can think of it as the intersection of a line through the point with the polyhedron. But we're not going to just focus on lines. We're going to focus on an inequality that contains the polyhedron, but happens to define a supporting hyperplane to the polyhedron. So this blue figure here defines an inequality that separates the plane into two halves. And the extreme point happens to lie on the boundary defined by this inequality. But what you notice is there are in fact many inequalities that have the same property. For example, I can take this purple figure here. It will again divide the plane into two halves, and it will have the extreme point on the boundary of one of the halves. And the polyhedron is included in the half that the inequality defines. In any case, these inequalities are called valid inequalities, valid for the polyhedron. And we're going to define the face of a polyhedron as follows. So let P be a polyhedron in Rn, and let A be a n-tuple, beta a real number. We say that the inequality A transpose X greater than or equal to beta is a valid inequality for P if A transpose U is at least beta for all U in P. Now consider a subset F of P. We say that f is a phase of p if there exists an inequality ax greater than or equal to beta valid for p such that s is precisely the set of x in p such that a transpose x equals beta. In other words, if f can be written as the set of points in p satisfying some inequality with equality, then f is called a phase of p. And we say that the inequality a transpose x greater than or equal to beta induces the phase f. Or we can say that f is induced by the inequality a transpose x greater than or equal to beta. So if we go back to this example here, the red part is a phase and is induced by the inequality that says x2 greater than or equal to 0. Here the axes are x1 and x2. And the green part is a phase induced by the inequality x1 greater than or equal to 0. Whereas the phase corresponding to this extreme point in blue is induced by infinitely many inequalities. The definition actually allows for p to be a phase. And the reason is p is induced by the inequality 0 greater than or equal to 0 because this is certainly a valid inequality for P, and every point in P will satisfy this inequality with equality. Now, if F is a phase of P, but it's not P itself, we say that F is a proper phase of P. The fact that the definition allows for infinitely many inequalities is somewhat unsettling. But there's a result that we're going to state next, which will allow us to enumerate all the phases of a polyhedron. Suppose we have a polyhedron P given as follows. Then every non-empty phase of P is given by the set of X in P satisfying AI transpose X equals beta I for all I in J, where J is some subset of 1 up to M. 
So what this means is that if you are given a face, then there is a way to obtain that face by selecting a number of these inequalities and set them to equations. Then all those points in P satisfying those equations will give you that face. In fact, any time you set any number of these inequalities to equalities, you will obtain a phase of P, and that's a fact that can be proved. So let's look at an example of how you can enumerate all the phases of the polyhedron given as follows. So we can enumerate all the phases of P by setting all possible subsets of inequalities to equalities. Now, it is quite possible that setting some of these inequalities to equality will give us an empty set, and in that case, we'll just get what is called the empty phase. So let's see what happens when we set the first two inequalities to equality. In that case, x1 plus x2 is minus 1, and x1 is equal to 0. So that means we get a single point, x1, x2 equals 0, negative 1. And so the phase that we get is just a single point, 0, minus 1. And if you're going to draw this polyhedron, it's going to look like this. Now what happens if we set the last two inequalities to equality? Well, we'll get x1 equal to 0 and x2 equal to minus 2. That again gives us a single point, but that does not satisfy the first inequality. And so that will not give us a phase. And to obtain the phase consisting of this single point here, we can set the first and last inequality to equality. Whereas this phase here is obtained by setting this inequality to equality. And this phase here is obtained by setting this inequality to equality.